tutorial for Nokia HQ and today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to build an internal customer support and ticketing system within Bubble uh, without using any external services so um, there's popular services such as Zendesk for example but obviously they cost money and you can rebuild a similar functionality uh, in, your, in your Bubble application and for most use cases this should be um, more than enough okay so um, what I have here right now is in just an empty bubble application. I have a few other pages here, which is for something else for, for our plugins. So we can just ignore that. But I have a page here called customer support and um, which is just an empty page right now. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually head over to our data tab. So let's head over to our data tab. And right now we just have a user type user, which is always default in bubble. And we're going to create a new type. And this type we're going to call ticket. So this will just be the support ticket. Okay. And this ticket will obviously have um, a content or let's have a, a query, let's call it query, okay, of type text. And we'll have a response from the whatever the, um, the support agent is. Obviously, this is, this is a really simplistic kind of support ticket because there's just one question and then just one response by the support um, uh, employee. Um, you could also have a conversation, a real conversation. What would you do then? You would um, have a list of texts here, which would be the conversation, okay? Also possible, we're gonna just stay with the simple um, version here, um, but again, a conversation would also work fine. So we have a query asked by the user, a response by the support agent. Obviously, we have to define, well, what user is that actually? So we have to have the type, uh, the field of type user, and we can have um, the agent assigned. So let's just say the agent assigned, um, agent assigned will be also of type user. All right. So um, is there anything we need? I don't think so. If there is, we'll we'll get back to this. So we made this private here now. So let's actually head to our privacy rules and define them. Okay. So when this tickets let's call it user, is the current user, well then obviously you wanna uh, allow this user to see everything. So if the user that create this ticket is the same user, allow everything. And also if, let's call it agent, if the tickets agent assigned is the current user, well then same thing again, he or she should be able to see anything, everything. Uh, and anyone else should not be able to see any data. It's important that you define these privacy rules here because um, a good programmer will be able, so for example, if I check this here now, even though you, you don't show the support tickets anywhere, um, a good programmer will actually be able to find your data. Um, so always make sure to um, define these privacy settings here. This is the best and most secure way to um, yeah, protect your data. All right, so I'm back here in the bubble editor now in the design page, I mean, and let me just uncheck this here and let's have two pages. We're going to have one page called customer support, um, which is the page where agents um, will be able to create uh, to answer to queries. OK, and we'll create a new page, which is going to be called submit ticket. OK. Um, all right, let's just click create. What you could also do, which is quite nice, you could create some form of, um, of of reusable element. Like, let me actually show you how that would look. So let's add a reusable element. Let's say you want to have like a pop up button, which will open on every page, and we're going to call this submit ticket. Okay, and this will just be a reusable element that we can add everywhere. And what I want to do, I want to just remove the background color here. I want to add a floating group. Okay, let's just add that here, maybe like this. Center that vertically and horizontally. Okay, let's make that a square. Let's give that a background color. Um, I don't know, something blue. And let's give it a roundness. All right. And let's say, okay, this should float vertically uh, relative to the bottom. Okay. And there should be an icon. Let's call this icon support. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's actually just work with the, the reusable group. I'm just going to remove the submit ticket here because that's actually nicer here to work with a reusable element. So submit ticket here again. Let me just define the style, uh, make it white maybe. All right, let's give a nice shadow to this button. So let's have a shadow style here. Um, yeah, looks quite nice. Okay, and now let's add a pop up. Okay, 
let's add a pop-up to this usable element and this pop-up will have the title um, submit new ticket okay and now we will need all the information so we're going to have a group here and we're going to call this group submit okay so bear with me and here we're going to have the input so we're going to have um, the query or the question let's have that font size 16 and let's just have the placeholder here enter your support query okay however we have to uh, oops we have to add a conditional we have to say all right conditional um, when the current user isn't logged in this should not be visible okay um, instead a text should be displayed here maybe in red um, which says please log in before submitting a ticket and as a conditional when current user isn't logged in this is visible all right okay so let's actually hide this now we don't need that doop, doop. so that's the support query and um, let's have a button submit so when this is pressed we want to create a new thing this is called ticket let's add all fields the agent assigned is now it's going to be interesting um, I'm going to do that in a second so let's have the query here the query will be the multi-line inputs enter your supports query obviously the response is empty and the user will be the current user and now what I'm going to do I'm going to create a kind of system where um, a ticket is randomly assigned to any agent okay so how do we know someone is an agent well we need some kind of um, yeah, a field that defines what kind of user this is. I always do that by using a hierarchy field, okay? And the hierarchy field you can set to admin, agent, moderator, or just default user, okay? And this is how I always define what kind of user I have in my bubble app, okay? So under privacy, um, exactly, under privacy, we uh, now have this field here, hierarchy, okay? Um, but let's just head over back here to workflow and we can say now, okay, the agent aside should be do a search for a random user. However, the hierarchy of this user should be agent. Okay. And then just choose a random, um, just choose a, a random item and that's it. Now this t new ticket will be assigned to a random agent that works for us or in our application or whatever. Okay. Next, I would just, just want to reset the inputs. And I want to show an alert, so let's just have an alert here, a nice green alert. Oops, like this position at the top, and let's say ticket submitted. All right, so on the workflow now, I want to say okay, reset relevant inputs. I want to hide the pop up, and I want to show our alert. And that's basically it. Okay, so what you can do now, you can add this submit ticket floating group everywhere on your Bubble app. So um, I'm just going to create a new page here, just a test page, test ticket, okay. Um, let's say you have just random text here, I don't know, I'm just going to add a text here, lorem ipsum, okay, just to fill some information on the page. And now we can go to our uh, repeatable, uh, re re reusable elements, and we have to submit ticket group here. We can just drag that here, maybe to the bottom right, that looks nice. And then if we preview this page, We can see this nice floating group button here. If we press that, nothing happens because I forgot to add that. So under submit ticket, let's have the action when the button is pressed. We want to show our pop-up. Okay, really simple. Let's just refresh the page. What's great about this floating group, it moves up and down, so it's fixed. Um, our page isn't long enough for this right now, but I'm going to click here on the floating group now. Our pop-up opens however we are, we're not logged in so we can submit a new ticket so works as as we wanted um, so let's actually um, create a new user just for testing purposes and submit our first ticket so I'm gonna go to all users just gonna create a user really quickly let's call them test at nocohq.com 
hierarchy i'm going to leave empty because this is just a normal user i'm going to log in as this user now and um let's check what happens oops that's the wrong page test ticket All right, so let's click on the, the support icon. Let's enter our support query. Hey, um, this one feature doesn't work. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's click on submit. And the alert is shown, everything works perfectly. Let's check in our database under app data, all tickets. Yep, we have our first ticket here. No agent assigned because we don't have any agents in our database. We have our query correctly and our user. Great, that worked fine. So let's just delete that again. Um, let's add a bit more functionality. Let's go back to the submit ticket and workflow. When submit is clicked, we also want to send an email to both the agent and the user. So first of all, to the current user email. And I'm going to keep things really simple. Um, just send their name, I don't know, whatever your app is called, subject, new ticket. And then the body, thank you, we have received your support ticket, or your support query. You will be informed via email, okay? And we also wanna send an email to the agent, so to the new tickets, agent assigned email, subject, a new ticket, Hello, you have been assigned a new ticket. Okay, obviously you could add more text if you want. What you could also do, you could add a field here in the pop-up, maybe with an attachment, with a file uploader, and you could create a new um, field here in the ticket uh, data type um, called file, attached files. So users could attach files, they could attach images, that's all possible. We're just gonna stay with a simple text, here, uh, text query, okay? So great, um, this part of the functionality is done. So let's just go ahead and work on the actual kind of, let's call it support agent panel, okay? Let's have a text here and say, okay, uh, hello, whatever the current user's um, email is, okay? Let's just have that here at the bottom top, top like this. All right, let's make it a bit bigger. And then we're just gonna have a repeating group here. And this repeating group will contain all of the current support agents tickets. Okay. And let's say, all right, so the data source is the current users or actually do a search for tickets where the agent assigned is the current user. Really simple. And then inside you can obviously have just the support query. So let's have the query on the left side, which is the current sales ticket query. And then on the right side, the agent can enter his response. Okay enter response let's actually give this repeating group a bit more space let's add a button here submit obviously design is not nice right now that's something you can work on uh, yourself but i'm going to uh, have the button here click when submit is clicked we want to make changes to a thing we want to change the current sales ticket we want to um, define the response to be whatever the multi-line input enter response value is okay um, and then we want to um, send an email to the current sales ticket. Um, what is it? User email. Okay. Subject, send your name, app, again, whatever. Subject, ticket response. And then hello, your support ticket has been solved here is the response again something like that you can define the text response and then we can add the dynamic data which is um, the response of the um, current query one small thing i want to do i want to actually add a conditional here to this repeating group because we only want to display tickets where the response is empty okay so um yeah where response is empty because um exactly because we only want to show 
tickets that have been not been responded to and tickets that have been responded to should be thrown out okay one last thing under workflow i want to add a conditional to protect this page i want to say all right do when condition is true when the current user's hierarchy is not agent well then we want to redirect whoever this the person is visiting the page back to i don't know the the um, test ticket page okay and we're done so let's go ahead and test this whole functionality so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new support ticket and i'm going to have to create an agent also so under all users i'm going to just going to create our first agent let's call him like this okay, and the hierarchy will be agent so because we only have one agent now our new ticket will be assigned to this agent okay all right so let's create another agent just to show you that it's only assigned to one so let's have test two Okay, should come and agent. All right. So let's create our query again. So everything doesn't work. How do I upload images? Okay, let's click submit. Our new ticket has been submitted. Okay, two emails will have been sent one to the user that just submitted the email and to the assigned agent let's see which agent was assigned all tickets okay that doesn't work let's check why okay let's check why um oh yeah we defined the privacy rules so that no one or that basically a user can see another agent's email so how can we change that well various fields we could say all right when the um let's call it agent when the current this user's hierarchy is agent, well, then you can see everything, okay? Um, let me just explain why this doesn't work. So under test ticket, actually under repeating uh, the floating here, the reusable element, when submit is clicked, a new ticket is created and a random agent is assigned, but we, can't, we couldn't find this random agent because the hierarchy or because we can't see other users information and now we added the privacy rule that when the user hierarchy is agent then we can see his information okay so let's just try that again i'm going to create another ticket and let's enter the support query just ran in uh, Lauren Ipsum. Okay, let's click submit. And now let's see if it works. So let's go back to our, to our app data, all tests, our tickets. And now our Lauren Ipsum query, yep. And we have an agent assigned. So the user that created the query that has the support and the question and the agent that is, the, um, the query is assigned to. It could have been assigned to both uh, info at Noko HQ and test two at Noko HQ. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I just received an email here, as you can see um hello you have been assigned a new ticket this is the agent email so yep we have a new email assigned and we can now log into our um, agent panel so let's log in as info at noka hq under our customer support panel and let's see take a look at what happens okay so hello info at noka hq um and our repeating group is empty so let's take a look at why it's empty um this is quite just to, as a note here um it's there there might be some mistakes while building but that's normal in bubble and that's also the reason why we um don't in this way prepare the tutorials so that everything is perfect because it's also good to show you how to debug these errors and because this will happen all the time you will do something and it won't work but there's usually just one small thing that is missing and that's what we also want to teach you just to show you well what might be the thing that is missing what is the thing that you might want to change for it to work so let's take a look at that actually because what we have here should be the repeating group okay search for tickets where the agent assigned is current user maybe this is somehow um the problem okay so let's just delete that and take a look if it works now yes it works now what is the reason well a bit confusing it was correct but there is a difference between something being empty and something just being an empty string um 
we can check in the privacy but there i think everything is correct yeah everything is correct so that's actually the difference so how can we now define if something if a response has been made or not well simple we just have to add another um, field here to our ticket let's call it call it done question mark the, the default will always be no but then if the button submit is pressed we want to make changes to ticket and the field done will also be yes okay and then we define here um, a conditional search for tickets where done is no and that's all we have to do so we just fix this problem and we'll work now uh, without having too much work so let's also apply maximum width here will look nicer and let's preview that again All right, so we have our for query here, our response. So let's enter our response. Um, you have to click two times. I don't know. <laughs> let's click submit. Done. Our support ticket is gone. Um, quite satisfying. Um, and we have no more support tickets. Obviously, you could make the design here nicer, add a text that says you have no more support tickets, um, something like that. Let's just see if everything worked in our database. So under data, app data, all tickets. Great, we have our agent assigned. That was correct. And now it's done. Yes, it is done. And the response, you have to click two times. And our user just received an email with this response and hopefully he or she is happy with the support response. So yeah. A really simple and quite quick intro into customer support tickets, but that's basically the gist of it. Um, as I mentioned already, you could add files, you could um, add the possibility to have real conversations. So maybe now the user would have another query and you can kind of add that to the current query. So a lot of ways you could add to this functionality now, but as a basic support functionality uh, within your bubble app, I think that's um, more than enough and obviously really useful um, and you don't need to pay for or have other kind of external um, um, yeah, um, support software. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I hope you learned something and I'm going to see you guys for next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.